worship, worship, worship. Here it is, Lobo's paramilitary Christmas special. Hey, Jamie, I have a huge favor to ask. Can we do a Christmas special on one of my favorite comics? Oh, uh, which one? Lobo's paramilitary oh, Christmas special. The only problem is I don't think we have time to do that before Christmas. It would make a perfect episode. Well, I'll think about it. But, Doom, if I say no, are you going to snap me into dust like you did last week? No promise? Promise I won't snap you to dust. What was that? What an ominous start to the episode. Oh my god. Collectors, welcome to this episode of the comics and video game collecting show Thanos Loves Yuna. If we can make it through this show alive, we will be continuing on our conversation of Mega Man. Uh, we have a complete set of NES, SNES, and Game Boy Mega Man games that we're going to send off to grading. You can see that I've got my white gloves on, which means I'm going to be handling some very rare and very expensive collectibles. And we will also take a look at a cool Nintendo Power comic with the first appearance of Mega Man. And since we get to talk about comics and video games, this is a segment I like to call Comics and Consoles. Okay, collectors, let's look at the Nintendo Entertainment System, NES Mega Man games. In front of me on the table, I've got Mega Man 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Out of all the Mega Mans for the NES, number 5 is probably the most valuable. It was the near the end of the uh, Nintendo life cycle, and Capcom was winding down. They wanted to start concentrating on the Super Nintendo. As with many players, they were moving on to the Super Nintendo and getting into games like Mega, the Mega Man X series. So uh, Capcom did not produce a lot of these for one, and then not very many people bought them because they were already moving on to the Super Nintendo. Uh, when I brought it out, the only thing I noticed with it, um, the game was in nice condition, the box has got some general wear and wrinkles on it, but it's got a nice glossy cover. The manual had a lot of really cruddy dirt on the very top, on that white part there, and it spilled over onto the back and, and onto some of the inner pages as well. I just got a white eraser on the end of a pencil and just very gently wiped that dirt away. It's a quick easy fix and when I send these off to get graded that you know that might give me another grade up. Mega Man 1 is kind of a funny one. So first appearance of Mega Man uh, in any material later on we'll talk about that first appearance uh, uh, in in comic form. But what I want to say about this one is in one year ago December 2019 there was a heritage auction uh, that had a sealed sealed version of Mega Man 1 that went for, I think it went for 75000 75, There was a print error on apparently the, the first boxes that were sent out. I went on eBay afterwards and I found a whole bunch of the Dr. Wright variant boxes and they weren't very, very expensive. Now, mind you, those weren't sealed copies like the Heritage Auction, but... Um, I, I don't know. I don't know how uh, how rare that is. There hasn't really been any investigation on it. Mine is not the Dr. Wright variant. It is the regular Dr. Wily uh, box cover. So it won't, you know, it won't have that perceived premium on it, but it's still a very uh, valuable game, especially in this kind of a condition that I've got it in. But the Super Nintendo games, uh, we have to remember that Super Nintendo uh, in general is just a very highly collectible system. So X3, I opened it up. Uh, it was It's kind of nice when you get the uh, other things that they packaged in with the games. There's just a Nintendo Power ad uh, and it's a, a video game registration card. That's th Those are, these things are considered part of the entire game and when you have those in there that it increases the value you'd be surprised at little things like this because absolutely nobody saved junk like this now my Mega Man X3 is really rough shape so the game itself uh, I'll show some before and after pictures it, it has a tear on the sticker on the game but 
previous to that it had a really stuck on sticker on there for that i used the uh, this stuff called goo gone and i just took a q-tip dipped it very gently in there and brushed it very lightly because you don't want the actual game label to come up but you want you want to soak in any of the, those aftermarket stickers on there and get those off so that looks nice a lot nicer now like I, I hate that there's this tear there but that'll get me you know hopefully another grade uh, increase when I send these off for grading the box is not too bad uh, the the back is there's no crinkles or anything uh, at all wrong with that and it's nice and glossy the front is got some wear on it and there's some some dents on it but nothing that i can't deal with this manual though is just horrible i don't know what happened to this I, in fact i this must not be my original one because none of my original games are in this bad condition but it's got a huge strip of tape on it um and there's some other paper stuck underneath that tape and just it's just wrinkly as hell it's horrible so and there's some aftermarket staples in there too somebody went in and, and just stapled it two more times this manual for sure i am going to send this off to uh, the same guy that's going to be doing that albedo number two from episode number two he's going to press out all these wrinkles and make this look reasonable again because it, it looks like a dog's breakfast right now uh, the Mega Man x2 is also very valuable but uh, that one was in pretty decent condition uh, this Mega Man X has a little bit of a sticker on the front here, so I'll take that off with the, the Goo Gone afterwards. And uh, the Mega Man 7, the, this is a pretty decent one too, but it's there's nothing really wrong with that one. It's in pretty decent condition. Okay, so off to the uh, Game Boy games next. So with the Mega Man games, uh, there's no additional preparation I have to do before sending these off to grading. They're all in very, very good condition and they all have their books with them. The Holy Grail here is the Mega Man 5. I think it was just super rare. It's also the only Mega Man game out of all of the Game Boy ones that had its own unique monsters or, or ro robot bosses, I guess I should say. Uh, all these other ones just copied the NES games. So that, that might also be a reason why this one's so sought after because it actually has new gameplay. This is likely the most expensive out of all the Mega Man games we've seen today, especially in this condition and uh, with its box and instruction manual included inside there. That will be uh, one of the highlights when we get these back from uh, Wada Games, the, the grading company that I'm sending these to. So just uh, as a preview for a future episode, I bought a fake copy of the box for this Mega Man 5. I want to do a whole episode on that in the future. We won't talk about it too much right now, just because there's a, there's a lot to discuss there. Nothing particularly exciting has happened with Mega Man except video games, so nobody's flocking to buy these. I've got some up on display. These are from an Archie series. They just have really cool covers. Sometimes that's all it takes for a comic to become collectible is just to have a really cool iconic cover. This is Nintendo Power, Nintendo Power Magazine number six, and it features the first appearance of uh, the Blue Bomber Mega Man. It also has a very cool Ninja Turtle cover, so that makes it even more collectible. If we flip over to the first appearance of Mega Man in here, in uh, it's not a very good first appearance. Mega Man's looking a little bit out of shape as he's taunting Dr. Wily through the computer terminal there, but it's a first appearance nonetheless. In this Nintendo Power magazine, uh, J. Scott Campbell, a young J. Scott Campbell, 15 year old, won an ultimate video game competition so he submitted to nintendo power magazine his idea of a new video game called lock arm and he submitted uh the, the story around it the characters and the character art so this is j scott campbell's very first published art in a magazine also making this nintendo power magazine very collectible um and you know what this story is actually on J. Scott Campbell's Wikipedia page. And if that doesn't make it legit, I don't know what does. Oh, okay, perfect. Thanks, Vic. Oh, 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 it was a lot of talking. Have you given any more thought to the Christmas special? No, I haven't given it any additional thought yet. I don't think we're going to be able to do it, though. It's too close to Christmas, okay? Okay. Get it all out of me. Okay, collectors, 
That is our final show for 2020. Uh, I want to wish you all a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And I want to thank you all for joining us on Thanos Loves Yuna. And that's a wrap. <laughs> Perfect. What about the Christmas show? Is that it? Uh, yep, that's it. Vic, you promised. I promised I wouldn't snap you to dust. That doesn't mean I can't snap everything else. Welcome to, to insanity. There is a time when the operation of the machine becomes so odious that unless you're free, the machine part is on the gears and upon the wheels who run the levers, people who own it, that unless you're free, the machine will be prevented from working at all.